Welcome back everyone to part four of the MOSFET gate driver videos that I have been doing. Um, it's part of my uh, another series that I'm starting called um, circuit improvement projects. That's what I'm going to name it. So basically what I kind of did was uh, I took a look at the gate driver circuit that we had originally designed for our um, 5 watt flyback power supply, right? And by circuit, I literally mean what we did was we took two pins and ran a wire between them. So, I mean, you call that a circuit, like what isn't a circuit? Um, but then what I, what I said or what I proposed was like, I, I, bet, I bet the reason like you maybe think that would work is because on paper, what you would expect is the drive pin to literally just be sending a beautiful, the cleanest, most beautiful, squarest wave you've ever seen before. And it just perfectly operates the, the, the gate pin of this MOSFET. But then I said, okay, well, that's actually not the case. That's not what happens. We have, to, we have parasitic components we have to deal with. There's imperfections. There's, there's a couple of major problems that we have to solve, right? You know, they were just in review. Uh, they were the inrush current problem. And then the ringing we see on the gate pin whenever it tries to pull the signal low, right? So this is another big problem we have to use, uh, have to solve, sorry. And... So the, the, the solution was in, was putting that resistor in there, and that's where that 10 ohm resistor came from. So you probably thought, okay, great, problem solved. Like we're, we're back to the beautiful, clean square wave that we kind of dreamt about. Um, and then I, but then I said, okay, actually, no, we still have one more thing that we want to do. And again, the, the reason that we're doing these things is, like I said, the outcome, the goal with this is to get the clean, a super, super clean square wave here. And I should note though, there's like a, a good, um, what we say, conventional knowledge or was it tautology maybe? Uh, that um, in engineering, you can solve any problem as long as you have enough time, money, and resources. Um, but the problem is you seldom, sometimes you, you seldom have enough of all those and sometimes you have none of some of them. So. Uh, with that being said, what we're kind of do is we're we're not trying to break the bank or um, require too many resources. Like there's going to be a it's going to be like the concept of uh, was it diminishing returns, right? Where eventually the the what we add to this will not improve it so much more. But that that one resistor we added makes a huge huge difference for us. Anyway, so getting back to it, I think what I'll do is so we'll just talk about the the next problem we have to solve. And that is going to be the problem of the floating pin, right? So maybe you've heard of the concept of a, of a floating pin and maybe you haven't. So basically what a floating pin is, is in logic, you have two states. You have high or low, right? So ground is low, whatever high is high, right? In this case, it's like 14 volts is high. And so what you really don't want in logic is for it to be kind of, the, the signal to be floating around, you, you want it either at zero volts or logic logical high. You don't want it floating around at, say our case, we wouldn't want it floating around at five volts or six volts or seven volts. I mean, that's kind of the ringing problem all over again. Um, but there are, other, there are other problems that could introduce, uh, that could cause that logic line to go quote unquote high, right? There's, there's stuff like uh, just EMI or just noise on that line that could affect the signal and so so basically what i'm saying is we can get some some quote unquote like false highs you can call them uh where that gate signal gets driven high even for you know a nanosecond a microsecond when we don't want it to be that would just again this can affect the longevity of our circuit it could affect the signal integrity it has adverse effects and whenever i propose a solution you'll see okay well if we can we can solve if we can solve it in such a within a very easy way then why don't we actually we do that right so you remember i, I just said the problem was that the pin the signal is floating it's we either, it needs to either be high or low so what we need to add here is um something known as a a pull down in some cases they call you can use a pull up depending on on the uh how the logic works you would either use a pull down or a pull up resistor so um in short, what a pull down resistor, the way it works is it's connected to this line right here, and it's just connected to ground. 
basically what is in, it ensures is that when this drive pin isn't high, this line is connected to ground through a resistor. So what it does is it pulls the voltage low. Um, however, your resistor value is such that it's high enough such that it does not affect the ability of our drive pin to provide a signal to the, doesn't affect the drive pin's ability to pull the signal high when it needs to. That makes sense. Um, so I'll just go and introduce an example. Like there, in this, ex in this specific case of the MOSFET, you can do the math and look at how the parasitic, of, parasitic components will affect our, um, our uh, gate to source voltage, basically our, the, the gate level. And then you can come up with, with, a, with a basically bounds that you need your resistor to fall in. But I'll tell you, so I, I did the math, I did a bunch of research on that. And basically it seems like it's a huge range you have for one. Um, but basically what, what it comes out to is the upper range is something like in the mega ohms. And then the lower range is something like in the, like, you know, maybe hundreds of ohms or, or tens of ohms. But basically what you need to understand is that anything that's in the kilo ohm range, I would say one kilo ohm to a hundred kilo ohms will work just fine. In this case, we're just going to use a 10 K resistor. So what you do is you connect it to one side of uh, one side of this is connected to our uh bgs line and the other side is connected to ground okay that's not what i wanted to do uh i just shift click shift click it shift clicked uh shift clicked and basically um that's basically what the pull down resistor does uh, that's that's how you you add one to the circuit so what happens is like i said so whenever this drive pin is high it has no problem pulling this high because the amount of current that flows through here is extremely extremely small um, however whenever the drive pin comes low this basically just helps pull the signal low right so any type of residual emi or any type of electrical noise that tries to pull the voltage high it's just going to get synced through this right here and it should be noted like the drive pin does have its own internal sink like it does turn into a like it turns into a ground basically whenever it pulls it low but it just uh one thing just the way like logic pins tend to work if you want to be extra extra sure just put something like this is a dedicated this is literally a ground plane in this case while we're trying to like something that can switch like logic is not going to be as reliable of a ground signal so basically for that reason, adding a pull down resistor is, is going to be a great way to ensure that uh, whenever your signal is low, that it stays low. So we're talking about like, if you look at like these little wavies down here, this is going to be like the noise we're talking about that we want to try to solve, try to fix. So it's just going to help keep it low and to avoid any type of false triggering of the MOSFET just to ensure proper operation of our flyback controller. And then it's just going to help uh, improve the longevity of the part because it's not going to have to be dissipating a lot of power whenever it turns on just a teensy bit or something like that. Um, so, like with that, that's what that's what I'll, this is what I will definitively say. This is this is basically the end result of the gate driver circuit. What we'll come down to. So in this case, all we needed was a 10 ohm resistor and then in parallel to ground with a 10k resistor. Um, like I said, it could get more complicated where you have to start adding in some of those diodes like these right here. Um, and it's, it's very simple though. It's whenever you realize that you need two very different values for your R on and R off. Other than that, it, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Like we know how to calculate for both of those resistor values. Um, but other than that, yeah, so this is where, this one I would say this circuit is, is complete uh, right here. This is, I would say like professional quality um this is this is exactly what you would see like any um any board you pulled off the like you went and bought like any power supply you went like you bought this this probably has some type of gate driver circuit in it something like this um so yeah um that's pretty much all i have to say about the gate driver circuit for the mosfet like i said you have any questions at all about anything i covered drop a comment down below and i'll be happy to uh answer it uh, if you have any projects you want me to work on, any ideas like, oh, I want a certain, you know, there's a there's a bunch of different topologies for power supplies. If you like different ICs, we can look at buck converters, boost converters, etc. Um, there's a lot of other cool stuff. We'll, maybe we'll get into processors later on this year or next year. 
stuff like that we can um, take a look at. But that's basically where I'm going to leave this video. Um, so thank you so much. I really hope I helped you guys out. And uh, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you want more videos like this. So uh, thanks.